Cinco, if you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Welcome Cinco back. Happy. Cinco. Is Cinco happy? <laughs> Welcome back, whiners. Uh, happy Thirsty Thursday. We're back again. We've just been doing it, doing it. I'm here with my one of my really good friends here in really Houston. Good. Should I say one of my best friends? Oh my I don't, goodness. I don't know. I'll Rachel take it. Carlson. Hi. Hi. I also call her Redhead Rachel. Do you? Yeah, like if I'm you talking mean, to other people, I'm not oh, talking. Not I'm to not my saying face. like <laughs> hi, redhead Rachel. <laughs> no, but like with other girlfriends or something, they're like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm hanging out with Rachel, redhead Rachel," because I redhead do have Rachel. a blonde Rachel, and I also know like two Rachels back in California. So honestly, when I hear you on this pod and you do say Rachel, I am like, "Which Rachel?" You right. Know, sometimes right. I am like, so "Which Rachel?" I mean, obviously, I know because you're like, "I hung out with Rachel," and I'm like, "That wasn't me." <laughs> But sometimes we need a defining. What fucking Rachel is she? <laughs> totally. Sometimes we need defining characters. But when you so. say like anything good about Rachel, I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I don't need to break up any friendships <laughs> at this point. I love you both so equally. Yeah. yeah. And um, Redhead Rachel. Redhead. Rachel Carl. People call me Carl Carlson. Carlson. Which Rachel Carlson Ray. Right. People call you Ray? Yeah. It's because me and the other Rachel did grow up together. So right. I'm Carlson. She's, yeah. We were totally yeah. just catapulted into your group of friends. Yeah. Carolyn and I, when we moved here to Texas. So <laughs> we were learn. constantly like coming up for air. Like, what do we say? But right. I think Rachel Carlson, or I also have to say, like, you own the Traveling Spirit oh. Bar, which is um, a lot of my like good friends from back at home will have seen me bartending and whatnot yeah. on instagram so if if you ever see me doing that that's rachel redhead rachel's company <laughs> <laughs> which is insane and i look up to you so much because you're a whole ass business owner oh i'm getting right into it <laughs> yes yes i mean yes. i'm bringing you on because yeah one, i appreciate you being yeah open. give me an intro I'm giving you an intro. Okay. This is the intro, bitch. <laughs> the intro is that you are a good friend of mine that I made here in Houston. Yeah. The intro is that you are a redhead. <laughs> the, intro, okay. the intro is that you own your own business mm-hmm. and I work for you sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, the intro is that you, I wanted you to be my one of my first guests because we're still getting like our studio set up here in person and there's a lot of... <laughs> How Ups many and hours? Downs, emotional How many hours? roller coaster. <laughs> How many hours have we been here? I mean, setting up. To be fair, them? I told you to be here at like seven thirty, and you were like, "Can I just come over from my work?" To event? be fair, to be fair, like you have been here for two extra hours almost. That was yeah. your doing, not mine or Cinco's. I'm saying like how many hours have we been sitting like in this room? <laughs> I mean, that's the part of the pre-show though. We sit around for a couple hours. You know, mess around with the equipment and then, you know, we jump into it. And then we know? jump into it. We've been drinking. We've been having a good time. We've peed a couple times. We've peed a few Rachel times. Rachel got herself. <laughs> Rachel locked. Actually, Rachel locked us out of my bathroom. Look. look. That's, That's what happened. Lock. I didn't do anything. I didn't lock myself in it. It was a malfunction of the door. And I got out. And then it locked itself <laughs> after the fact. So when I went to pee three minutes after you left out of the bathroom, you're like, I didn't, I didn't lock it. I didn't lock it. It I was you. I didn't lock it. It was I you. I didn't lock it. Well, just so you know, all of these doors, you can just wiggle <laughs> and they'll open. So no problems. None of them actually lock. <laughs> None of them. Yeah, no, it worked. I just had to pull it, pull yeah, it tighter. Sure. I was going to say we're drinking Traveling Spirit Bar Old Fashions. I fucked up. <laughs> It was just too high. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Do I sound okay? I'm back. I'm okay. back. I just don't like something like right in my face, you know? <laughs> you can pull it out. Oh, pull it out that way, yeah. Out the mic. Okay, I'm good. Do you want to say anything else about your intro? Because I was just going to fast forward the fact that you said we should make old fashions, traveling spirit bar old fashions for the episode rather than because we normally drink wine. Yeah. But you were like, are you going <laughs> to make them? <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> I own my mobile bartending company <laughs> so i don't actually make drinks <laughs> other people make drinks for me or like they make drinks and then i taste them and i say we yeah, are I your like peasants yeah. we are your peasants yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well i just don't make drinks anymore you know i just don't right. make drinks. definitely in the beginning i made drinks 
I don't make drinks anymore. So yeah, I just don't. even when I go to family things or anything like yeah. people are like, are you going to make anything? And I'm like, no. You know uh, what? I kind of do identify. But with if that. you want me to bring one of my bartenders that I hire, she can do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i do identify with that because even as being a bartender for i mean since i was 21 yeah. people are like you're gonna make me drink you're gonna make me drink you're gonna make me drink i'm like you get ah. stuck i mean there was you definitely a long time where i went to friends and family parties and i would get stuck making drinks for forever so then i got to a point where i was like mm, i nah. love that and i say you. i mean our friend Alyssa, she hires us for every she hires one of my bartenders i'm not making drinks no you're right yeah you're so right yeah. Yeah, but I just thought it was gonna be like a treat because you're like on my podcast. Also, that it's you were your house. Make I don't know where your stuff is. It's like cooking in somebody else's kitchen. Okay, relax. Okay, you relax. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much easier for you to do it for me. I forgot the orange peel even. I know. It and then you were like, Did you forget <laughs> an orange peel for my old fashioned? How dare you? How dare you? you? Um, I wanted to just quickly highlight on the business and then we're just really right. not going to talk about your fucking business <laughs> because who cares, to be honest with you. <laughs> we can um, just graze over it. <laughs> we can just graze I mean, over I it. do hate talking about myself. I know. We're Capricorns. We're Capricorns. But you do I talk about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. No, but I What do. is the difference? Well, I don't We're know. Only you talk like about yourself two, all the time. And I take selfies all the time. Yeah, and I do not. What is the difference between us? I don't know. Well, I don't know either, but they, that's why I don't really believe be like in Capricorn tree, That's though. why I don't really believe in I know. Um, astrology bullshit Horoscopes. and time born. And do you believe in any of it, though? Because I have read, okay, one of my favorite. Yeah. One of my favorite things about Capricorn and what I've read in a horoscope is. It, it says, like, your favorite things, and it's, like, family, music, and those are all true, whatever. And then it says your least favorite things, and it says almost everything at some point. <laughs> and then yeah. it's 100% me. Like, I will hate you, and then I'll like you, and then I'll hate that, and then I'll like that. No, you're so right. I will hate everything. Yeah. yeah. Although I don't think I really ever hated you at some point. Maybe. Yet. Yet. I mean, tonight no when i had to get up three times to be and then required no. a different glass for my tequila and soda no i thought i gave you, you a one. really good glass because it's a margarita glass I and i thought that you would really appreciate that glass. i don't have a thick rim to glass mm. you know like you can't put your lips around it it's like i totally get it but like for a wine glass if somebody served me that i'd be very upset but just tequila margarita i just thought i was doing the right thing well, i'm glad so. you know my wine my glass preference now yeah, I sure do. <laughs> never get it wrong again. I'm glad that you never not liked me, though. Not yet. What was your Have first you ever impression? Not, I ended up being moved here a few months after, and Alyssa, who you've already mentioned, was like, hey, like if you yeah. have bartending, managing experience. I'll refer you to my friend Rachel Carlson, who owns a bar. And I didn't. You were like, I'm not really looking for bartenders, but like I'll keep your resume on hand. Yeah. Is that what I said? Yeah, yeah, which is totally, I felt like that was, like, normal. Like, yeah. I don't feel like it was a bitchy thing to say. I thought, when I first met you, I was like, oh, she's a boss-ass bitch. Like, um, I don't want to fuck with her, and I don't want to be on her bad side, is what I thought. When did we meet for the first At time? At an event. Yeah. I, you were like, hey, can you come to this event to, like, kind of trial yourself? Like, show me what you got. Yeah. Um, And because I was, like, from California, it's like, who am I? And I came, and... I don't know. I mean, it was, it was job, a very sure. actually the wedding that the, we worked was a. What very, was your first event? The, it was a wedding, and it was very your first slow. event was a wedding. Yeah, but but it was I was a third, so it was you and Anna, oh. and you were like, "Come shadow, come be with us." I remember. Yeah, in the camper. Yeah, and at it was a that very, place that you've gotten rained out after the fact. multiple times. Yeah. yeah, and it was very slow, very weird. But yeah, um, you were like, "Cool, you can go." Like after a couple hours, and I was like okay yeah um and then i think yeah i just later became like i actually became your hire more so than your friend and then we have the bir- we have a birthday as we were just talking about like two yeah. was two your birthday days. the 16th 16th mine's the 14th so we're just a couple days apart mm-hmm. and then i remember Alyssa being like rachel wasn't sure if she should invite you to her birthday party because you're like we're not really sure if you guys are like friends yet and i was like <laughs> that's fine i'm not offended <laughs> did i invite no you? oh no <laughs> That was when I first moved here. I think I asked, though. Alyssa probably said, She's probably no, like, no, don't worry about it. Don't do it. Paige is annoying. Because yeah. if I ask, if she's saying it, then it means that I inquired. 
You did inquire. That's what yeah. she said. N- which means that I got a negative response from her. Wow. Yeah. So, oh. Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, A-Liss, I've A-Liss. got questions. Anyway, and here we are. We're friends. And we really like each other. Yeah. Love I you. Think. I think you're great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love you. You're great. But that's no, why. Okay, great. So, if you see me bartending, holy shit. I've been bartending <laughs> for back. Traveling Spirit Bar. It's fine. Um, She is such an inspiration because... She's owned her own business. She started it from the bottom to the top. Are you five, six years in? Five years. Five years in. Yep. And we don't really, like you said, you don't like to talk about yourself too mm-hmm. much. But do you love being your own business owner? Do you hate it? What are your, like, whines of being a business yeah. owner? What makes you horny? What makes you happy? What are the best things, most fulfilling things? Yeah. Give me a little bit. Yeah. I do love what I do. So I own an event bartending company. I started five years ago. We have a vintage mobile camper bar that me and my brother-in-law refinished. Like, we remodeled the whole thing. That's what started. And then it kind of catapulted. We started doing smaller events, larger events, all of the above. Um, I love being my own boss. I love owning my own business because I, in my career previously, like, jumped from job to job. Not to say that I got fired or... I mean, I did get fired from them, but <laughs> <laughs> or gonna get into that. Or probably probably from my attitude. That. But I just would always get bored. You know, I I always like worked at a place and then got bored and was like, I need to move on. I need to go somewhere else. Owning your own business, like you will never get bored. There are so many things to do, so many things to learn. Like you are your own accountant. You're all you're your own website developer. You're your own manager you're your own you know you do everything and when I get bored I add on to the business like it's my problem that's a you problem yeah it is my problem that's your toxic trait I call myself a not-for-profit business because I I mean everybody gets paid I get paid whatever but I never make a profit I always put the money into doing something else like growing the business expanding the business let's do this now how do we make more money how do we become bigger how can we grow like so and see that i never i don't see that's why i don't totally believe in astrological science because it's (laughs) like i'm on the same page with you as like growing my business but i'm also like i'm gonna like settle for yeah but that's the thing like i'm not relaxing long term you're not looking at short term you're looking at long term i am like when can i fucking relax right you've been doing this for five years that is the thing you're looking at the i'm always looking at long term i'm never looking at short term i'm looking at okay what do i do today and then five years from now i can either sell it or it's so big to where I'm not in it. Yeah. I'm not managing it. I have other people that are managing it and I'm just Yeah. It's I think just you're gonna get there soon thing. because yeah. you've just got such a good business model. And and I remember you said that Australia was the first yeah. um country to that where yeah. you saw the traveling like camper bar, bars and mobile bar. bar it came over to the states in like 2016 and i so started saw, my business in 2018 and you saw that there was like an opening for it yeah. in houston or in texas in general and yeah. you just hopped on it and went yeah that's how it happened oh my god i literally my my girlfriend who does events i was working in a restaurant at the time she asked me to event day like day of wedding plan for this wedding and i had never done that before but i had worked in restaurants and hotels and front of the house like my entire life and she was just like I know you'll do a good job so I went to this wedding and there was a bartending company that was supposed to set up like three different bars they just had a margarita and then they had like mixer package beer and wine the bartending company like showed up showed up so late like I set up every single one of the bars the bartending company was the worst they didn't have all of their supplies they had to leave halfway through to go get some more stuff and so at the end of the night we're like having dinner like eating some food from the buffet and I'm talking to the owner of this bartending company and I'm like so what do you do for a living kind of like what how Cinco asked me (laughs) (laughs) what a drink I was like what do you do for a living and she's like like, what do you do yeah because I was like you suck at this I was like what do you do and she was like well I do this full time like I own a bartending company and i was like oh and i was like you're terrible like, did you ask rachel in that capacity earlier like you were like 
degrading? Like, what do you do for a living? Did I? No. <laughs> no, I think it was, I think we were just, you know, <laughs> you going like, back and oh, forth. Oh, do you okay. do this full time? Yeah, I did ask that, but I didn't. That was That's a general a question. General yeah, question. Like, okay, is this your, like, full time gig? Like, all right, well, I'm a guest of the pod, right? For being a business owner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I'm just saying. So I'm just saying. So at the end of the night, I asked her, like, what do you do for a living? You know, like a jerk. And she said, like, I do this full time. And I was like, wow. Wow, 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 wow. And, I w- and then the very next day, I went online and I researched bartending companies in Houston. And there were none. Or I like none to the point where they're doing high-end cocktails like i'm i'm Insane. coming from fine dining restaurants right so we're doing craft cocktails we're doing stuff like that so i look at fine dining craft cocktail only beverage companies not catering companies and there were none maybe one and then i start doing more research and i find camper bars and these mobile bars like in europe and australia and I talked to my best friend about it, and she told me to ask her dad for money, <laughs> <laughs> and I did. Okay, yeah, and you did it. Happened. And yeah. five years later, you are you have a staff of like eight to ten people. You have an old, you have your own warehouse. You have a full camper bar. You have portable bars. Is that the right word to call them? Portable yeah. bars. We have a two thousand square foot office in the loop. We've got five portable bars. We have a camper bar. I've got a staff of about twelve assistant. Yeah, we do about 350 events a year. Well, last year. This year, we'll do about 450 events oh, a year. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just saying, just, just saying, saying. Just saying. So it's definitely growing. I'm looking for an operations manager, <laughs> if anybody knows. <laughs> oh, great. Great great to, yeah. yeah if to anybody advertise. knows anyone. If anyone knows anyone. Salary, PTO. <laughs> whatever you want. Whatever right, you want. PTO. <laughs> Literally, whatever you want. Please. Oh. Wait, so that goes into like um the na- the thing that makes you most horny about owning your own business and oh. your wine of the oh. week. Is your wine of the week like yeah. having I to hate find managing people. Managing people. I just really here's the thing. And going back to Capricorn, like I'm just not empathetic. I'm just not an so empathetic I'm person. So empathetic, oh, which is why I, oh I am so, so we're different. empathetic. Here's the thing. I worked so before I started this business and my previous life, I cooked for a living. Yeah. I was I chef. went to culinary school, like right out of high school. I cooked for 10 years. I'm not empathetic. Like people just work and they work hard. And that, I mean, it's terrible no, so to say. And I, way. and honestly, I started this business because I hated the restaurant industry and hated all the men that ran the un- restaurant industry. But fuck them. So as a manager, or as a boss, like the girls say I'm a good boss. I think I do a bad job. It's like how I feel about um, sweeping. What do you actually mean? <laughs> because I know it might I don't hard quite to comprehend. Understand? Okay, I just mean that I don't enjoy doing things that I don't feel like I'm good at. Don't ask me to. So not that you feel like you're better than sweeping yeah, a restaurant. No, you just don't know how. I just when after I sweep a floor, I see all the little you know things. That I missed. And okay. I'm like, God, I sucked at sweeping that, you know? Oh. And it makes me not want to do okay. it again. Okay. So the worker bees, which are the people who are the bartender servers, like you trust them more with that job. Not that I trust them more. I just think that they're better. I and hate doing it. You're not good I at it. I hate doing it and I'm not good at it. And there are better places for me. Perfect. In the Oval Office. <laughs> In the White House. <laughs> <laughs> of the traveling spirit park. <laughs> yeah, I just don't I just don't love managing people. I think because th- it really affects me the things that people say. So, if people are upset, if people are like as a boss, it really really tears me up. Like I make people write notes every night after an event and all be up looking at those notes and then thinking all night about like the notes like they didn't have a good time because of this or something happened because of this and it is just like I can't make people happy and I I want like I'm uh maybe not that I'm a people pleaser because I don't feel like I I am that means I just boss I just feel like I have to do things right like I'm just like I really need to do things right and I feel like I can't always make people happy yeah and so it really like it affects me you know yeah 
So maybe because I, that's, that's what I'm saying is I don't think I'm good at it or maybe it just affects me too much to where I'm not like effectively doing my job. Like even my, my sister is my administrative. She's does all of the admin. Mm -hmm. She does all of the back, but she also is very, she's kind of like HR and I make her, she does all the things. (laughs) I know. I make her send out all the emails that really I should be sending. (laughs) (laughs) But she gets mad at me and she's like, stop like allowing them to do, do things this. yeah X, or y, like Z. they make a lot of money lots. like tell them no and I, it's just really difficult for me to do that because my business is my baby and and a lot of the business is the employees and the bartenders yeah and i just have to say that obviously i know that you're my friend now but i did st- when i first met you i did start off as like working for yeah. you and i I don't know. I just want to say that, like, I do think you're a really good boss. I think that you run a really good company, and I think that you know exactly what you're doing. So I think just keep doing that. And at the end of the day, it is your job, your business that yeah. you're representing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so – but I get it. I mean, I worked for restaurants for years. Yeah. And so I know managing restaurants. Yeah, that's the worst. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't mind – I just need somebody else, like, in between maybe. Like, I'm happy to, like – you need to tell somebody yeah. to tell that person what to do. Exactly. And yeah, my sister kind of does that. But I want somebody else in between so that m- maybe they can make a decision and then I can be maybe the final say, you know. Right. Of whether that decision yeah, happens or not. Are, but I don't want to you be. You are like still friendly. Like you're still friends with everyone. And also so it's, it's hard. like a toll. Like managing is a toll when you have so many other things to deal with. It's just like I don't want to really half the time I'm like I don't want to fucking hear it like yeah. you know so it's just I need it's just a toll yeah managing is just the worst okay but in <laughs> managing years, and hiring and just employees in general are the fucking <laughs> we worst. all suck oh sorry that yeah. I suck for you <laughs> and like Gen Z is the fucking worst <laughs> the fucking worst I had a girl come in for an interview and a crop top uh oh I hired her and then what? I fired her two weeks later <laughs> why did you hire her that's your issue Katie my administrator who had uh, interviewed her first really liked her. No, and you, she talked no. me into it. If and you I had a bad, to, no, I had a bad feeling about her. You better come to the I interview know. looking more than you would ever look right. at the place of business. I don't want to see your belly. Definitely not a belly. But like, I'm also not Gen Z, so I just don't really. No, understand. that's not the way that we're going. All right, keep. I agree. Keep the standards I agree. high. I agree. When they go low, we go high. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we cover up everything. <laughs> we cover up the value of the Middle East. Yeah. God. Um, I've been kind of going like this in my chair, and it's because oh. I got a massage. Okay. And it was the worst massage I've ever had. Oh, those are I the worst. I requested a deep tissue. Where'd you go? Which I always get deep tissue massages. I went to a place called oriental massage it's by the nail salon i used to go to there's your first mistake (laughs) and it was a mistake i'm telling you i thought you were milk and honey only i like milk and honey but i just thought my friend how many times did i tell you to go to my guy how many times he doesn't even work there it doesn't matter i have a new guy no i have a new guy and i could have preferred but you can't just go. That's what willy I... Willy-nilly. Yeah. Well, I tried. I went willy-nilly, and she literally rolling pinned my arms. I'm like, what are, what mus- What deep tissue muscle are you getting <laughs> on the on my arms and mommy shins? Have that you ever done That is literally toilet? bone. Please stop. I literally was on my stomach, face in the, you know, the massage thing, and I was like <laughs> convulsing as she was... Yeah, penetrating my body, if you will. Oh, and I was I like, will. "Could you?" I will. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, uh, like I was like, literally, like I was getting really rough sexed, and then I was like, "Could you go lighter?" Like I was almost in tears. It was really a hard time, and she's like, she was- laughed. She actually giggled a little bit, and she's like, "Lighter, deep tissue." I'm like, "Yeah, medium, medium," because you're going too hard. And still, for the next, and I booked a ninety minutes. That's uh, also. It should have been a sixty minute. Always your first time. Yeah. Why are you gonna pay that? Pay so much money. My trapezoids when you have don't been know. hurting because my trapezoids have been hurting for I so long. You. I really wanted somebody to just I know. literally like I know solve my I body know. problems, and she didn't. 
I'm worse. I'm in I know. pain. I know. I'm bruised. It hurts to the touch. Like this actual sweater on my skin hurts. That's how badly yeah. she has bruised me. Yeah. But what I'm getting to is the fact that I got home. <laughs> I got in the shower and I think it was a little slippery from the massage. And I oh, slipped no. and fell. In the bath. Out, I fell out of the bath. Like, I fell onto my hip. You need to get those pads in your I tub. I need a shower mat. Yeah. Yeah, I need that to add to my Amazon cart. Um, it was awful and traumatizing and honestly really scary. Because then, as I tried to get up from the fall, I fell again onto my back. So I have bruises across my hips and bruises across my shoulder This is a blades. Sex of the City episode. <laughs> About females living alone and like dying. You don't I even have a cat to like need... find you and eat you. Oh that, that was my the episode. god. I texted my sisters and I was like, uh, if you guys don't have a bathtub shower mat, you should get one. And then we got into this whole conversation and my sister Courtney was like, Honestly, I'm worried that I'm gonna die and my cats are gonna eat me. Well, that is the sex and sex. <laughs> that is the episode. What? You never saw that episode? No. Miranda. No. Miranda. Miranda. I mean eat her. <laughs> Get rid of her. Am I right? Oh, I love- <laughs> well, you should have a redhead. I know, but that's not fair. <laughs> just because I'm a redhead does not mean I'm a Miranda. Let me just put that out there for the whole world. To- for every redhead living on this world, just because we are redheads does not mean we are a Miranda. I'm a Carrie with a little bit of Samantha. <laughs> Probably a lot of Samantha. I did. <laughs> but definitely not a Miranda. Probably a lot of it is Samantha. All right, let me ask you. Have you ever had a Thai massage? I know this so, was like an Asian. No, I mean, I don't necessarily think so. All right. So. Should I? Uh, It's not just like a little like thing. It's they a asked big, if I could walk on like my back and I said no. Okay, so maybe parts. Yeah, 100 A Thai massage, like, they put you on a bit, like, it doesn't look like a little (laughs) massage table. It's like a bed size. Like, it's like a queen size bed. And Uh? they're on it with you. Uh. I mean, they're naked. There are poles for them. Naked? There are poles. I mean, they're they're not naked. They're not naked. You're naked, obviously. There are poles for them to hold on to at the top because they're, like, stepping on you and stuff. The first time somebody was like, do you want Swedish or Thai? And I was like, well, I've never had Thai. And they were like, well, maybe we do a little of both. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then they started, and I was like, no, I'm good. However, she like kept going. At one point I was sitting up <laughs> naked. I mean, I had like a thong on, but she had me up and was like, had her arms wrapped around me from the back, from behind. Your tits out. She's on the bed with me. <laughs> She's on the bed with me. Yeah, tits out. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, sitting on top of her she's cradling me i'm not joking <laughs> i'm not joking i'm not joking that's a time massage so go so go i mean on it would you recommend no honestly i don't recommend it but it was I'm crying. it was weird it was weird i felt very uncomfortable she felt very comfortable she definitely had me from behind. <laughs> and I was naked. <laughs> it's not like how you go to a massage and every time they do something, you know, they tuck the sheets in. Totally. With, or with the rocks. Yeah. Like, throw so the that rocks like <laughs> other things aren't happening. Or they tell you to like no. slide down. And no. Then she over. picked me up and like the sheets <laughs> came off. She wasn't trying to naked in the room. She wasn't trying to cover anything. Yeah. <laughs> It happened. I'm, it happened. I'm crying. <laughs> I can give you. I can give you the name of the place if you want to go. Kinda. I don't recommend it, and I think I broke out like in a rash on my face <laughs> later from like laying down on the sheet. Because you, you know. were so stressed. No, from laying on the sheets that were on the queen size bed <laughs> that other people have been on, or that they didn't wash appropriately. <laughs> Why I went, I don't know. I th- I thought like. Maybe Why I'll... did you go? Well, because it was like cheap and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it said like Swedish massage, Thai massage, you know, it's like I live over like kind of near Chinatown to where people go to like Asian massage places and they're like, oh, it's a great deal and they do a great job. You don't know. 
This was uncomfortable. <laughs> no, I would not recommend. Uh, two out of ten. I'll give it a two. <laughs> what was the two? I don't know. I mean, whatever. <laughs> you know. Ziga, Ziga, have you been to? Um, have this you place again? <laughs> Just, uh, I'll ask, give you the address. For I'll mm. give you the address. Give me that. You know, I'm giving her a two because she really, I mean, this woman was older. Uh, I'm an older uh, Asian woman. And she tried her. I mean, she put her back into it. <laughs> so it's not for all, lack. Of, it's not for lack of trying. It's my fault that I didn't knew, know what I was getting into. Which is all you can ask for. Yeah. I wish they would tell you what it was all about, you know, before. Oh, my God. They should right. probably they should probably tell you about the headlock prior <laughs> to like doing it. It was that extremely uncomfortable. Yeah. I probably would have had like my top on if I knew I was going like full frontal. So that's why this time I went to the massage I said like she was like she the receptionist brought me into the room and she's yeah. like, Okay, there you go and I was like, And what is the dress code here? Because I've been to several massage places where they say leave on your bra and underwear or take off everything or leave on just your underwear. And so yeah. like now I'm like, I want to know what I'm getting into. I'm fine for anything. I'll just So go. what do you do normally? Um, you I do like what they tell you to do? I do what they tell me to do. Oh. I'm pretty submissive. Oh. <laughs> I always pretty leave submissive on. in the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever they want. Whatever they want. <laughs> Whatever you no, want. I always yes, leave on bottoms. It's always a thong, right? Always and a like thong. a small so that, you know. Uh, you can tuck we'll that get to blanket. the embarrassing. <laughs> we'll get to the embarrassing later. But isn't it embarrassing when they have to tuck the blanket into your? Th- <laughs> <laughs> that is always embarrassing when they have to. I know it's like you're fully <laughs> relaxing, and then you're like, oh, your butt kind of perks out. They like, have to tuck it, it in and I'm like, that doesn't look it good. Doesn't look good. It's yeah, like, I'm that call, doesn't. I'm gonna call Rachel and be like, what was that uh tuck package you had again? And I'm I'm here right now, and they're just Tuck-in. asking me. <laughs> I'm here right now and I just need to Okay, know but I always wear a thong because I did have a massage and he was my favorite massage guy and he left my studio and I'm really bummed about it still. I got a new guy, but he's not as good and he doesn't I don't know. You know, he doesn't do the things that What did not the those guy things but do he put a uh hot wet towel behind my neck when I had to flip over and instead of just laying flat, he like laid on this hot wet it was that really? is actually this woman did it's that to the me. best thing Wait, ever that woman did this no and i me. asked my new guy to do it the first time i had him wow, i was like hey will you and say that well yeah i was like will you, hey will you put a rolled up number one i guess the other guy like took it out of the hot thing earlier because the one he put me on my neck was so hot it was like burning the back of my neck and also i've been to him multiple times and he hasn't done it anytime after so you didn't remember what i asked you to do Terrible and I'm not going to keep telling you Terrible. what I asked you to do. However, okay, so my first guy that I really, really loved, sometimes if I got, like, a 90-minute, he'd, like, do, like, stretching, like, serious Yeah, I love stuff, a stretch. Which, like, my leg is going. So, like, <laughs> even if they tuck in, you know, the blankets, like, things could happen. The sheet is going yeah, into if your crack. Yeah, if there's not a, and uh, a underwear, <laughs> like, things could just be out willy-nilly yeah if you will so i like to wear like a thong just in case things get crazy and legs like go up (laughs) if stretching happens because you don't even you don't always know if a blanket's gonna get (laughs) tucked appropriately you just want to have that second you know i don't think i've ever done a massage without underwear on yeah so you do even if they say fully nude you're no you don't always just leave your panties on same same, same, same. Yeah. Single? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I've never been. I've never been, to You've be honest. Never been You've never been to a massage? massage? Never I get them um, uh, every other week. Cinco, out of all the females who have bought you things for your apartment, nobody's bought you a massage Cinco, or a couple's that's crazy. massage? I've been given a massage, but no one's ever tried to like, Oh, like a professional one. Thing, huh? A professional? No, no, just, you know. I also... Wait, 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 wait. You've had massages... Right. At home? By women. Yeah, you know. Just but like have them. you gone to a, not a professional? I haven't been to a professional. No, I have not. I haven't. Let me ask you a question. You gotta go. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Male or female? So previously, before my assault, oh, okay. male. Okay. And and now? After, I guess it's almost been a year now at this point. Yeah. Longer, I, I scheduled think. an appointment. No, August. Okay. I scheduled an appointment, like, just out of, like, 
normal normalcy normalcy yeah. Uh, made an appointment with a male because that's what I prefer because I do like their mm. I don't know firm pressure grab. their grab yeah. better I and agree. like nothing because it's a male but it just so happens I like the I don't know their hand touch better and then I was like wait a second nah and then I thought about I filmed an episode in season two where somebody told me that they were sexually assaulted by a male massage therapist Stop. And um, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to say. And they were like, I didn't like it was just so for like, I just what do I do? I'm on this table. I felt very yeah. out of. I felt very out of control. And so anyway, I thought about all those things and I was like, eh, I got to change it to a female. So I've had female ever since. And do you hate it? I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> yeah. I hate yeah. It. I've never had a good massage from a female and massages that are terrible are the fucking work because you're sitting there for 60 minutes I or did 90 cry. minutes i did cry yeah. during the massage and you're thinking night. the and whole time you're thinking the whole time in your head i hate this i hate why it. am i here why am i paying money for you guys it? 90 minutes yeah. of my life last night i hate yeah. it 100 percent. it's the opposite of what it's supposed to be which is relaxing it's infuriating do you get deep tissue when you go or do you just do regs well i do swedish but i do like a deep i mean my old my old guy caesar did do really hard i need to find a new guy that is as hard as him because he would like do my legs and i'd be like uh like it's pain you know i want it to be a little painful i want it to be i want it to I want to enjoy Get the it toxins and be relaxing out of me, but I want it to be painful so that the next day I'm like, fuck, that felt good. Yeah, no, I felt last night and today. If the air hits me, I'm bruised. Yeah, on I, my on my shins, excuse me, on my arms, yeah. I'm so in pain. I took Advil and Tylenol. I agree. I had one on Monday, and I feel the same way yesterday and today. Like, I just don't feel great. Really glad you didn't update me on this because, um, whiners, I talk to Rachel frequently and whenever we have to work a bartending shift together, we're like, okay, let's not <laughs> talk for days before we have to work a, you know, six or eight yeah. hour bartending shift together. So what the fuck are we going to talk what about? What the fuck are we going to talk about for eight hours when we work together? And that was kind of the same thing as this episode. Yeah. We were like, let's not talk before this episode. And I'm really happy that that <laughs> didn't come up. But... We were out together this weekend for like eight hours at a restaurant. We were just talking shit about bartenders shit. in restaurants. Like, yeah. and I, as you guys know, I worked in restaurants since I was 14 in Washington up until I was 20. How did you work at 14? In Washington State. It's oh, you're allowed. at Slave 14. Bad. Slavery, child, did you say child, child labor? labor yeah no i had a whole key i was a supervisor i had the code to the supervisor, state. I was a supervisor at, 14. at 14 it's crazy what they allow children to do <laughs> isn't it honestly speaking of Sheehan, huge lawsuit going on right now i don't know she and the kids what's happening Sheehan, the clothing website yeah i know i know what and the kids is. there's what's like happening? kids like being recorded of working as like six or eight years old in the Where? Sheehan warehouses everywhere in the united states and china what everywhere yeah okay so well out. think about it twice when you order 15 things and return 14 wow yeah <laughs> Like from Amazon too, or no? I mean, Ama- I do that on Amazon, but not Shein. So okay. I've never actually ordered from Shein. They're just on Amazon. I've done it once, literally one time literally for a wedding. For a wedding, once. I know a couple of people who are big Shein orderers. Um, think about call them out. <laughs> <laughs> call them out. Um, but I wanted to say that I brought up. I was like people watching, as I do at this restaurant we were at. Trattoria Sofia. Oh, say that, that again. Say Trattoria Sofia. Trattoria Sofia. It was delicious. Yeah. Um, we had great bartender, great service, but I was watching these regulars and I was like, ugh, gross. I hate regulars. And you were like, oh, I, love I was like, regulars. I love regulars. And I was like, gross. Like they just feel like they Why do you oh, hate a regular? Ugh. It's like they just like come to you and they just like expect something and they just like depends on the regular i think so but and we got into this conversation yeah. in which we were like wait stop talking we have to talk about this next week on the pod 
But it does depend on like whether it's a table, like restaurant regular or a bar regular, I do feel like. And it does depend on the, the type of restaurant. It depends on the type of restaurant, I feel like, 100%. Because like at a Chili's, a regular is the worst person in the world. The but they're the worst. But they're the worst person in the world, like, regardless. You're right. Right? Totally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> literally, yeah, literally 100%. I come from like nicer restaurants and nicer neighborhoods so the clientele is, better. is rich people who <laughs> are regulars so they think they're your best friend which they do become like friends and family and they tip you accordingly and they want to know about your life and you want to know about their and you life actually do and genuinely enjoy seeing them yeah, genuinely. Like, happy to see them on your I nights I still, working. to this day, this is what I, I said to you. I was like, I used to love my regulars at the last, at one of the restaurants I worked. I was like, I started my company right after I left that restaurant. My first clients for my business were those regulars who booked me so that I could be in the face of their friends mm-hmm. and family so that they could book me. Like, Those people cared about my success. Even still to this day, they follow me on Instagram or if I see them out, like they're so happy for the success. I do love that. And I feel like back at my days at Wood Ranch in Valencia, I do feel like I had those regulars at the bar and a few tables, but like the regulars who just feel like I've been here before, like. Well, those Don't aren't you know. regulars, I feel like. Those, those just, are, like, yeah. What do we call it? <laughs> yes. Assholes who come on the same day and time yeah, every week. Yeah, those are assholes. Well, those oh, aren't yeah. my regulars. I wouldn't take them. Oh. Yeah. Standards. No. Yeah, I'd be like, sorry, you're somebody else's. I mean, it's your, I mean, yes, they can be regulars, but they can't be your regulars. Like, I had my regulars. They'd walk in, I'd say, hey. And they'd be like, where are we going? Well, it's like Go you have over your there. favorite regulars and then you have regulars that just are regulars. That are there all the time. Yeah, I guess. But I think that's the difference. I think it is the difference. But you I were also, know. you never bartended. Did you ever mm-hmm. serve? You were just a chef. No, Not I just served. a chef. I, I don't want to say that. I cooked you professionally chef. until 2012. And then I moved back to Houston. And then I only did front of the house. So serving mostly. Oh, you did do serving mostly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you get along with the hosts? I. <laughs> do you know this about me already? A little bit. Oh my god, my friends will tell this, <laughs> or anybody who's ever worked with me. I'm gonna be. <laughs> I'm about Let's to. Let's hear it. I fucking hate hosts. <laughs> I hate hostesses. <laughs> anybody who's ever worked with me. Look, I'm not proud of who I was <laughs> working in restaurants. I have grown a lot being a business owner and having to deal with personalities and deal with people. I am, like we were saying earlier, you have to be nicer to people because they're working for you. You know, you don't want them to leave. (laughs) I was evil. I was evil. Working in restaurants and I hate hostesses. I'll tell Still you a couple to this reasons. Day you hate them? Like when you go out well, to Well, look, here, I don't work in restaurants anymore, so right. I don't have to hate them. No, I'd say as a but server. But do they still irritate you as a as a customer? Uh, I guess I just don't have like as much interaction with them, so uh-huh. no. Maybe if they had interaction with me and they were terrible at their jobs, then I would. But it just doesn't happen that often. As a server at a restaurant, I hated the hostesses. Was it because they wouldn't seat you enough? They wouldn't double seat you? They set you They were bad much? at their jobs. Bad they were jobs. always bad at their jobs. Uh, all of the above. Like, they <laughs> just didn't <laughs> do their jobs correctly. I'm very good friends now with a hostess that was that worked at a restaurant back in the day, like in 2013, who worked with me. And she'll be like, you were so mean to me. <laughs> I and I'm it. like, I'm very sorry. And she's like, I mean, it's fine. Like, we didn't do what we were supposed they didn't do their job correctly it's a different caliber of restaurant than you do but i have to say i was like a really good hostess that i got like three raises in my first year and i was making more than the manager at one point and that was i mean a good hostess becomes a manager or becomes a hostess manager where she reigns over the hostess 
I did. Right? Is that what you did? Nobody tests my fucking name sheet. And you're not marking anywhere where these tables are going. I'm putting these tables. My table sheet. Because it is so critical. The position is so critical. And that's what's so crazy. And you know your servers. you're giving it to a 16-year-old who has no knowledge of anything. You're allowing her to figure out how much each server is going to make in a shift, how busy they're going to be, what time they're going to get out, what time they arrived. You know, it's all so like you have to stop s- stop seating somebody if they arrived the right, you know, and yeah, you got to close out. out. There are things to know. So you are literally putting in the hands of this hostess how much a server and what their night looks like. And I would fight them I all the time. Believe it. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you're tapping on the couch. I mean, bad. but my favorite, I kind of miss it. You kind of miss, being, yeah, a little bit. Um, confrontational with the host. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awkward. I mean, I don't get to have a lot of confrontation in my life anymore. <laughs> Shoot. Well, I'll see if I can bring that more for you. Okay. Um, okay. I had some of the winers write in some restaurant wines of the week, and Let's do it. okay, one person said managers. Period. Yeah. Oh, I have another period. theory on managers. Period. Managers, period. I have another theory on managers. Well, they're terrible servers that uh, couldn't hustle. <laughs> and so they became managers. Okay. They couldn't make enough money. So they could only be Because they're bad up. at their job. Because a server is a hustler. Like, you're you're kind of like a contract employee. You only make as much money as you'll put into it. Right. Like, if you work hard, you'll make more money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Managers only become managers because they don't make enough money. So they're okay with making forty five, fifty, fifty five thousand dollars a year to hang out and put in their manager twiddle code. Their to, you know, and, yeah, they twiddle their thumb. Yeah. I could never just hang out for like I tried a it. I was shift. a manager for like six months maybe. Actually before I was How'd in twenty one because I was it? such an exemp exemplary 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 employee exemplary. i think it's exemplary employee that great. i they were like we want you to be the manager before you even can bartender yeah. train because you're so good yeah and how long did that last i hated it exactly because anybody who was actually a good worker because i was good at yeah job. anybody who's actually it. a good slow. worker doesn't stay in management that long it was terrible because they want to change things they want to do better they want to help yes and they aren't allowed to do those things so only like very stagnant people stay in management or that kind of i got out in two seconds but okay somebody said them not having ada seating even though it shows they are accessible oh i I don't see that very often i was gonna say in california i totally see that happening like at my restaurant, they say they're ADA and then they are not. Yeah. Oh, because absolutely. there's so many hills, so many like ups and downs in restaurant, and there's steps up and down that makes to sense. the bathroom and stuff. It's like maybe you're ADA to get in. I but feel you're like not. they can get really fucked for that. Well, probably. Actually, I do know the restaurant that I worked for got sued a couple different times yeah. for that, but it's like, it's like they still deal. didn't change it. Well, that person, good on you. Ordering to go curbside and you still have to go in to get your food. What's the point? Mm. I, I still that. usually go in to get my food. I love a curbside moment, but it's like pretty <laughs> like you never know what you're going to get. Here's the thing. The way that we are in this society where we know that restaurants are like hard up for employees and things like that. Like I know you're pulling up to your car, getting to go delivery, but like maybe the bartender is the to go person and they're these in days. the weeds these days. And no, the you're bar. so right. Yeah. You're so so right. like, yeah, pull up. It's probably ready in the kitchen, but like, just give that guy a break and walk inside and say, "Hey, my name is Rachel. Is my to go ready?" Yeah, like it's it's easy enough steps. to do that. Yeah, I understand if you have kids or whatever. Like that's you know you have to stay in your car. You can't just leave them in there. Yeah, but I get it. Someone said, "Quote: Do you <clears throat> know who I am?" Which I obviously know that they're talking about like an annoying regular being like, "Do you know who I am?" Oh, they're saying, do you know who I am? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, nice. those are the fucking, wor- those are the fucking worst that I'm talking about yeah, restaurant wise. Um, your wine was fries are never as yeah. good as they are in a restaurant, but you want to eat them in bed. I know. Don't you? Always. I've never eaten a fry in my bed. You don't eat in bed. I don't eat in bed. That's the difference between not you and fries. I. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what do you eat? <laughs> 
What do you eat? Everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't happen often. <laughs> I just feel like I can't, you know, like nothing. I'm I'm saying fries, but really. No, but truly fries. Yeah. Just they're soggy the second. Like 10 minute drive, they're soggy. But really everything you gotta keep doesn't the bag taste kind of as open. good. Yeah, figure it out, guys. That's what I do as a takeout person. Bag open. Um, you got to leave the bag a little bit open. Yeah. Yeah. To get that air in. Mm-hmm. That's kind of it for the restaurants. Um, okay. We have to talk about <gasps> my love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited. Rachel Redhead Carlson. Can I call you that? That was Rachel Redhead Carlson. Is that okay? Only if you only call me that every single time you call me Rachel anything. Rachel Redhead Carlson. I'll change your name in my phone. <laughs> right now. Um, we have to talk about jury duty. <laughs> uh, my favorite. <laughs> so it's basically like Give me a recap. Yeah, it's um okay, so Jury Duty, it's on Amazon, it's like freebie. I don't yeah. know if that's the same as Amazon or whatnot. But anyway, so it's basically they're documenting a jury trial. So as a jury, you typically don't talk to other jurors. You can't con you know, like discuss the case because obviously you want to make sure that everyone's thinking for their own selves and blah blah blah. So this documentary came to like Craigslist and is looking for somebody to be like hey we want to document a jury duty trial is anyone interested in being in in this so they have 2500 applicants and they pick one person so one person of the 12 person jury duty is not an actor is a real human who thought they were just like gonna be involved in a documentary for this jury duty trial like what everyone else on the show the judge the People in the, I don't know what you call them, the, not, of course, the witnesses and the actual trial defendants and the plaintiff. Yes. All of the other jurors are all actors. Yeah. And it's really just kind of ends up being this social experiment yeah. on one human person. Yeah. And honestly, I had never heard of it. I did see it like through maybe when I was scrolling through Amazon, but I was at dinner with Rachel Redhead Carlson. <laughs> a few weeks ago and she's like have you seen jury duty and i was like no i haven't and she's like you have to watch it and she just gave me the cliff notes of the entire she's like i already finished it it's amazing you have to watch it and i watched it and i was floored enamored <laughs> in love dead crying laughing yes. all of the feelings sad amazed in love did i say that already the like, best the best the best there's something to know about me that if I'm excited about something, I will tell everybody about it. And I literally told everybody who would listen to watch Jury Duty, you are the only one who's watched it. But you, I so literally, surprising. the text message that I got back from you that was like, oh my God, I just started this. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I'm crying. And I was like crying of laughter or crying of love. And you were like, both, 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 both. And I literally <laughs> screenshotted those texts both, and both, I both, sent both, them. Both. I sent them to every other person that I had asked to watch it and was like, just so you know, it's not just me. It's <laughs> no, everybody. And can I tell you, like, we're going to fast forward real quick to like farther ahead. I have been telling everyone since I finished the show to watch it. I will stand on this table. Like we're at a restaurant with my coworkers. Watch there was like, 17 it. of us at work at a and restaurant and they were like what are you guys watching and i was like i will stand on this table and i will tell you guys you need to watch jury duty no i feel I so felt. strongly about it and i have co-workers that, that are watched it? starting to watch it yeah and they love it i mean love i haven't met a person who has not loved it. i'm a better person okay so 100% ronald is the main character yeah. well they're all main characters but he's the only person on this entire show who is not an actor not an actor and it is so he's flooring. six five. How and tall is he? You know what I find is so interesting about that he must be six five. Six, Do you four. find him attractive? I don't. Because he's. I white. think he's handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's very handsome. Because he's white. Like if he approached me at a bar, I would. Be he's into a little him. like um. He looks like he's from mid. Country. Yeah, and he seems like he, he? he's very endearing, and he's so cute. He's so. Cute. He maybe doesn't seem like he has like 
100% confident. You know, like I like a confident man. Yeah, but when you, okay, maybe when you look at him, you don't think that. But if you think about the three weeks that he spent on yeah. this jury duty, and by yeah, the way, spoiler alert, like if you haven't yeah, watched we're it, gonna you don't spoiler. Know yeah. anything about the then show, stop. stop now. But honestly, Rachel told me all of these details. Yeah. And I still. I literally like made her watch TikToks. Yeah. That and I everything. still went and watched it and I was still so excited. You have to see it from whole, start to finish. It's, and I, I started watching it a second time. That's so good. So anyway, I've watched Ronald, it a second time. Time. <laughs> I Ronald, have watched it a second this time. Six foot five gentleman. And Gentle. as you guys always know, I say always be a gentleman. Always like even a as a woman, just like yeah. always be a gentleman. This guy had no idea who was being filmed. The things that they put him through, like people falling, getting injured, people making like these weird inventions, like the plaintiff and the defendant, like His their next lawyers. door neighbor being like the weirdest guy and him like allowing him to come over to his place all the time and like and be, be best friends and you know what's funny it's like obviously this guy knew ronald he knew who's being filled for the documentary right like that's yeah. the premise he thought he was under but even i was thinking about myself what would i do in this case i would probably go home to the confessional at the hotel and like talk shit and talk shit yeah and i'd be like oh my god todd Ooh, what a weirdo and he Jeannie, would what a weirdo. barb Arb- always falling asleep like they tried there were confessionals where they would like ask him a question and he'd be like, I don't know, you know, whatever. Just a cool guy. Like he's just innovative and he's just yeah. trying new things and we just got to respect that about him. And, and then he'd be like, yeah, Barb's falling asleep, but you know, we're just trying to get her to drink coffee and stuff like that. Where I, Otherwise I'd be like, Barb's fucking <laughs> passing out. She's a con. Barb. Like, uh, she's get it together. It's not person. my fault. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. It was just the best I don't know. I just felt like kind of like very human. People after think it. that he was an actor as well. How do you feel? Not about possible. That? Not, Not possible. Po- I feel the same way. And I, I just obviously like I've talked about it a few times on, on the podcast. I used to work in this industry. Yeah. I've never worked on a live TV show. I've certainly never worked on a secret TV show, but I, when I saw this last episode come out where they like, let ronald know that like hey this is all yeah been you know kind of a candid camera like we've all kind of been judging you you're the experience here you're the person on trial these the actual you know evidence doesn't matter this is what we've been doing putting you through and he's so confused she cried oh my god i cried several times throughout the throughout the whole series but what i thought was crazy is like i've been in this industry before and like sure i knew that there was like potential scripts written to like keep people on track yeah but what i found out in the last episode was flooring that they like took the time and they would sequester people to make sure that they were able to to um rehearse before you know ronald was coming to set and then they would delay things on set because they wanted to rehearse before ronald got there but they always had and it's because increasingly as they went along Ronald kept figuring out things yeah. about the case, not about the TV show being filmed, but about like the actual why are, trial. Yeah. Like I just, I don't know. The, the, the lawyers aren't asking the right questions and I'm, I'm curious about this and I'm curious yeah. about that. And the producers and the writers were in the back of the, the, the back of the scenes. Like, why is he asking these questions? You have to watch the last episode. That's what I kept telling you is watch the last episode because not only do they tell Ronald what happened, like that he's been the only person who hasn't been acting this whole time, but then they go through everything that happened after it. So they go through like that everybody was acting and that this happened and then they had to do this. And it it's the most magical. Wasn't it the most Matt, I literally wanted you to call me so that I could watch it with you. <laughs> I when didn't you told call me, you. when you told me you were watching it, every time you told me you were watching an episode, I literally not would turn it on so that I could like feel <laughs> the things that you were feeling in that moment. Because didn't you feel so? I felt moment? something every episode. Yeah, I have to be honest with you. Ronald, Ronald. made me a better person yeah not that i like like him or love him or whatever i mean tiktok is to are you on tiktok enough of course to you and tiktok i'm not <laughs> on tiktok enough okay well i'm not as tiktok there is a ronald fan club on tiktok of course like of course all i see is ronald fan pages like i love this fan so much blah 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 i don't feel that way about ronald do i think that he was amazing i feel like like again look wise 
am I looking to date someone like Ronald? Probably no. But because why? What, is, what does Ronald not have? He just doesn't make me horny. Like I don't look at him and think, "Yum, Ronald." Because of what characteristic? I just I'm not attracted to him. Is it the color of his skin? <laughs> Maybe. Or I'm his attracted to white men. No, I love his personality. Yeah, I love it's his personality that attracts me to him. Yeah. It's just physical appearance that I'm not attracted to. Okay. And he's such a phenomenal guy, and he's made me a better human, like, in work atmosphere, like, thinking about people that are kind of annoying me at work. Are you nicer to people at work? I feel like I have to be because Ronald was. Yeah. Like, people that have just, like, weird things about them like yeah. people just who are unique just like understand let's just be their more weird accepting. characteristics exactly and, and honestly highly recommend when ronald 10 out of 10 showed todd a bug's life oh. do you know that that that's why i love the last episode so much because they were like and they went into detail i i do get confused of what i see on tiktok <laughs> actually in the because tiktok like deep dives into everything so right. i don't know if this was actually in i'm gonna call it a documentary because it pretty much is it a documentary. was it is but they went into a deep dive about um the fact that like he they they put a ton of movies in everybody's room because obviously they were sequestered for three weeks they did not put a bug's life in there thinking okay it's something about like an engineer or Something that he might show to him or something that he might see in his head and be like, oh, well, he's just, just like a cartoon. Misunderstood. They he went to the producers after the fact and was like, did you put a bug's life in my room thinking that I would see it? And they were like, no, no. <laughs> Ronald, <laughs> it's all you, Ronald. You. Wait, can we talk about James Marsden, who is like obviously like all the other people in the show are actors, but like this is like a big actor. Yeah. He's in the notebook, he's an X-Men, he's yeah. in Enchanted. <laughs> is that but, your favorite? No, that's what just what he says in the thing. He's like, <laughs> dude, Enchanted. I was in Enchanted. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so he's kind of a dick in his character roles, and so yeah. he plays that part in this documentary. Which really made it bad for James Harden. I mean, I'm but gonna th- honestly, I mean, hilarious. obviously it's not like that. No, but they're like cool now. Like he's such a cool guy. 100%. But anyway, he takes a pretend shit in Ronald's hotel bathroom <laughs> and Ronald cops to it for the plumber to come. And it's just like, God takes the blame. Wow. What a guy. And he's, what a the guy. Per- he's the reason why they were sequestered for three weeks because he called the paparazzis and Ronald never, never ratted, ratted. Yeah. He's the best. He just, all hail Ronald. Best. All hail Ronald. <laughs> but honestly, all hail Todd. <laughs> Todd and Jeannie. Who's your number one? I like Todd and Jeannie, who and they, Barbara and Barbara. I love Barbara. Um, I think Jeannie soaked. I think Jeannie might be my number one. When she comes out the door with her oh. swimsuit, stuff I on. said, "What did I say to you?" I go, "Kind of reminded me of you." Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> was that she the came up to the top? door and she just had a bikini top? <laughs> just had a bikini. I mean, she had bottoms on, but just a bikini top. And the guy's like, "You have to watch the show," but he's very uncomfortable to talk to her. And Ron's there, and he's like. Hey, put on a maybe put on a shirt. And she's like, Oh, you want me to put on a shirt? And she goes back in the hotel room. She comes back out. She has like a jacket on that isn't covering anything. And I was like, Paige, it's you would do that. Her arms and not her tits. Yeah. <laughs> it's not covering any of the parts that we were trying to cover. Like, oh, I got you. <laughs> like, what? And she's eating a tuna Wait. fish sandwich. <laughs> Oh my god, it's the best. And people say this actress is like this is her. She was like, I've been waiting for somebody for to, a role yeah, to, to play, play myself. myself. <laughs> yeah. So this is like <laughs> she was born to play this role and she fucking did it. Fucking killed it. Fucking killed it. <laughs> she killed it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely killed it. Couldn't yeah. agree more. Okay, so <laughs> go watch Jury Duty. <laughs> yeah, go. I mean, if if and you don't take us, anything else, if you everything. don't take anything else from this episode, it's watch jury duty. Watch jury duty. I mean, I would not be saying this. I don't passionately talk about things if besides I don't. TikTok. She passionately yeah. talks. Well, about I TikTok. do believe that everybody should watch TikTok <laughs> and passionately talks about jury duty. Well, I don't passionately talk about anything that I don't believe in. I love that. Yeah, and jury duty is one of them. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Love it. Go watch jury duty. What's your wine of the week? Quick plot twist oh here we go all right well we were kind of talking about this earlier and this happens a lot so Paige asked me to come on this podcast kind of as a business woman 
And I will say, when we sat down. Hide your toes. <laughs> I know. No free, no feet, free feet pics. Feet. I know. That's what you'll see. <laughs> if you'll you're watching this all episode that I've been hiding my feet <laughs> is because it's too fucking hot in here to wear socks. <laughs> but also, <laughs> I don't want to just like show my toes. If you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that Rachel keeps. Uh, Rachel hiding. Redhead Carlson keeps hiding her hiding. toes. Yeah, they have not been <laughs> seen the entire. Well, I guess they were. They were on the floor. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, can I get back? Okay, so when I got here, I don't know what the producer Cinco is doing, but I'm the first guest and I'm a businesswoman. He hadn't looked up any of my credentials. He asked me if I did this for a living, what I do full time, like I don't do this for a living. Uh, sir, uh, I, sir, uh, uh, sir, I uh, employ myself, health insurance, medical leave. I employ 12 other people. I have a office. I've been doing this for five years. This is what I do full time, all the time. Um, so this is what I do for a living. But it's not just single. It is literally every man. I'm on dating apps. I am single. And every dating app, when I say like, because I don't put my business name out there so that people can't Google me just because they can immediately right. find all of my information yeah. if they do that. But they're like, oh, you own your own business. That's cool. And they're like, oh, you bartend. Oh, that's cool. Like, how often do you bartend? Like, I don't bartend. Like, I didn't make this old fashioned tonight. <laughs> and True. I don't make drinks regularly. True. Yeah. Like. You uh, own the whole. I own a business. Yeah. My wine of the week is men. Yeah. What do I say? Not men understanding. Degrading the fact degrading. that I have have yeah started a company i do scratch. say like in Cinco's defense i do think that he was just trying to make conversation yeah for he sure does for know sure. that you Cinco. owned right Cinco. he does know that you own traveling spirit bar and i did tell him that you were coming tonight so yeah. he knows about that but like i do understand what you're saying about someone being like oh like you do this full time and kind of underestimating yeah. right is that right yeah like under oh so you own this like just for funsies yeah. or like that's just cool on the weekends yeah it was definitely just like yeah, conversation in conversation for oh, sure it yeah it was definitely in conversation <laughs> I mean you know I don't know if it's one of those things where maybe if you get that often and if somebody does ask you that question maybe you feel like a little bit more attacked by it right when they're just asking you the question it's not that it might just be me I mean even when I worked in kitchens or like worked like was in culinary school when men would say oh you you cook for a living do you do pastry i think it's because you're constantly immediately, overlooked <laughs> immediately i'd be like oh i have to be a baker right because but I listen is it because you're constantly overlooked as yeah. a woman in this industry probably that's not. probably why and so you've heard it three hundred thousand times and tonight was another one but like sometimes can be a genuine question like oh is this what you do for full time yeah. or sometimes it can be like is this what you do for full time? Yeah. Like, what do you do with your life? Like, what do you do? What do you amount to? What are you? Like a condescending question, which totally is asshole -ish behavior. Yeah, because there's no, there's no other way to ask it other than like, oh, okay, you do this full time? Like, how is it? Like, I was genuinely yeah. interested in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no other way to ask it. So, I mean, you know, I guess you just kind of <laughs> perceive it how you perceive it. But, I mean, yeah. It, I might, be, it might be me. I'm sorry. Sam. I mean, I, I wasn't going to say any names, but I think it was. <laughs> I don't think it's you. It's I just you. think that. I just think it's the way that. I think it's, yeah, the way that you perceive things, but it's also. I think also like unconventional businesses. It's hard to wrap your brain around like what kind of money or what kind of like businesses. You know, you say like lawyer or you say banker you say whatever right. i own a store or something like that when you're saying something like i own a mobile bartending company and you can't physically like see that as a store or as a concept like because we are traveling or whatever then it's harder to visualize like oh this is a real thing yeah so do you think a little bit more grace needs to be shown to people who are asking no. you about that or you don't <laughs> give a fuck no <laughs> My answer is no. ASMR. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Copy, copy. Copy, right. copy, copy. No, but I do. I mean, I agree with you on the fact that, like, there's a lot of careers in this world where men just really aren't accustomed to women 
being their own boss or being yeah. the CEO. And so I do think that like people are learning, but you are. Mm. You're your own boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Where can we find you if we want to book you? If we want to work for you. Oh. Um, yeah. What? All, all Social media. Yeah. So if you're inquiring about event, go to our website. It's travelingspiritbar.com. There's a contact form. It'll ask you for information about your event details so that we can get a better information about your event. Send you a brochure, send you info, and then schedule a call to chat. If you're just looking to follow us on Instagram, we're travelingspiritbar.com. We're also Traveling Spirit Bar or Traveling Spirit Bar on Facebook. Um, and then that's it. That's it. And on TikTok. Are you on TikTok? Yeah. I think traveling we're traveling. I think we're traveling spirit bar on TikTok. Well, I don't I'll really put, post I'll on put TikTok. All your handles below. You don't really post on TikTok, you just browse. I just follow. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. <laughs> I just um, create. Okay, Rachel, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so thank much you for, for having, having me. This is so much fun. Um, I will put all your handles below. Everyone can go click the link Great. in bio. Obviously follow me, Adultish Wines on Instagram, Adultish Wines on TikTok. My personal page, underscore Crutcher, on Instagram, Cinco Young, is it? Cinco Young on Instagram? Cinco Young, C-I-N-Q-O, Y-O-U-N-G. Dropping a song tonight. Probably should be out by the time you hear this. So oh, how exciting. Check it out. Apple yeah. Music, Spotify. You don't want to like, play us out with it? What is it if called, I was, even? If I was prepared, I would. <laughs> well, yeah, because we're coming out on Thursday. So just, what is it called? Right. Uh, it's called On Screen. So it's uh, I'm just dropping a new single every month. So that's just one of them. Oh my god, I'm excited! We'll have to play it on the next week's episode, or however you can help me do that, producer. Link <laughs> <laughs> <If you can, laughs> it in there get somehow. Up. Yeah, if you could help me with that, that would be great. Yeah, for sure. So Apple Music, Spotify, Single Young streams is booming as of late, and um, yeah, we're gonna. And then I'm also here producing this. You know, taking this to the top. You know what I'm saying? To the top. To the top. And uh, yeah. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Love you guys. Uh, see you next week, winners. Love you. Bye. <laughs>